Okay, this is lesson nine, combining inputs and outputs. And in this lesson, we'll be combining inputs and outputs across both the circuit playground and the app screen. For example, we may use drop downs or sliders to make LEDs on the circuit playground change. We may use buttons on the circuit playground to update elements on the screen. There's no new coding commands or playground features in this lesson, but we'll be combining many elements from previous lessons to do new things. So let's get started. In our preview level here, we have an app that will um, blink or flash an LED, um, our choice when we push some buttons. And we're supposed to identify one way that you think the screen's being used for input or output, and one way you think the circuit playground's being used for input or output. If we take a look at the code, we have an onboard event. So when the left button's pressed down, we're going to change the text to, of the on the screen here to on. And then depending on what we selected for the drop down, we're either going to blink or pulse the uh, four different LEDs. So in this way, the circuit playground is being used as an input uh, because we're getting button input. And the, <clears throat> the app here on the, on the screen is being used as an output because we're changing from off to on. We're doing an output there. Then the circuit playground is also being used as an output because we are blinking or pulsing four different LEDs. Then if we uh, push the right button, there's another event handler here, and that will turn the LEDs off. In, so in that sense, uh, circuit playground is being used as an input, a button input, and also, I guess, the output or lack thereof when the LEDs are turned off. Run it. So we push the left button, we're blinking, and the output onto the screen and we push the right button and we're off. And we can change this to pulse. Now we're pulsing instead of blinking and we're on and we're off. So in the next level, same app, but we've added another screen element, a short or a long buzz on a dropdown. So we have to add some code here and we're gonna get the value from the dropdown stored in a variable. Then we're gonna use two different if statements to check the value from the dropdown, whether it's a short or a long buzz. And then we're gonna play a buzz according to what the user chose. So let's look at the code. This is the code that I added here. We define on this line a variable called buzz length, and we use get property, and we get the value of the text property from the buzzer dropdown element. We store that in the variable buzz length, and then we have two if statements. The first one compares buzz length to short buzz. If that's true, it will use buzzer.frequency to play a frequency of 600 hertz for 200 milliseconds, and if the buzz length is long, we have two seconds, uh, same frequency for two seconds. Let's try it. So we're gonna blink and have a short buzz, or we could blink and have a long buzz, pulse short buzz, pulse long buzz, all right, next level. Okay, here we have more buzzer control. Uh, we're now reading the value from a slider to determine how long the buzz should be. And this was a debugger exercise. Look over the code to find the bug that's keeping the duration from being set correctly. And this was my code. I don't remember where the bug was. I think it may have been with the variable duration, like they use buzzer duration here and duration here or something it didn't match. I'm not sure, but at any rate, we define the variable duration. Uh, we have a event handler here where we push the left button down. We're gonna define the variable duration. We're gonna grab the value of the value property from the duration slider uh, element. We're gonna play buzzer frequency of 500 hertz for our duration that was set by the slider. And then we have another event handler here. So when we push the right button down, we turn the buzzer off. That's the short buzz.
Okay, next level. Okay, here we have the same thing. It's a buzzer control and a slider, but we've also added another slider to change the frequency in our little scenario here. Uh, different lengths and frequencies will page a different person to answer the door. The code isn't yet finished. Using duration at variable as a model, create a frequency variable that gets the value from the frequency slider element. Modify the code that makes the buzzer sound, buzzer sound so it uses the frequency variable rather than the default frequency and run the code. So here's the line I added for the frequency. We've When the left button is pressed, we have now have defined frequency. We're grabbing the value of the value property from the frequency slider element and storing it in there, and then we're uh, playing a frequency of frequency determined by the slider and duration determined by the other slider. The right button has not changed. That still turns the buzzer off. So short and low, medium and low, medium, medium. Beep, boop, finish. Here on level five, let's see if we can use a slider to change how fast the LEDs blink. And we're using the change event so the lights are updated right away instead of pressing the button, which is cool. It's continuously reading our slider and changing as we change it in real time. So we're going to use a variable and a get property to get the value from the drop down. And we're gonna update the blink blocks to use the slider variable. So we have a variable so well first of all with the event handler when there's a change in the interval uh, element that's this slider we're going to define the variable blink time we're going to take the value of the value property for that slider and then we're going to update the blink blocks with our blink time variable here. So we're gonna put our slider uh, value in there each time to uh, change the blink time for the LEDs. And as usual, the right button just turns them all off. So left button, oh no, we just have to, there we go. You don't have to push the left button. This is when we change the interval. This should. So there's a long blink. There's a faster blink. There's the shortest. It's kind of cool. Okay. That's all there is to that one. Lots of practice here. The first was left versus right. Left button. Left button toggles left or right is what we're looking for. Okay. Create an app that controls whether the left or the right side of the circuit playground is turned on. Uses a drop down to select the left or the right side. And then the user presses the left button to activate their lights. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we have an onboard event handler. When we push the left button down, we're going to create the L or R variable. We're going to grab the uh, text, the value of the text property from that LED drop down. And then we have two if loops. The first one checks to see if the left or right variable reads left. If it does, we're turning on LED zero through four and we're turning off five through nine. If instead the left or right variable reads right, we're turning on LEDs five through nine and turning off zero through four. And then the right button turns everything off. So let's run that, see if that one worked. So the left button 
turns le on left. Now we push it again. It goes right. And the right button turns it off. Next was intensity. Use a slider to change the intensity of the LED. So create an app that lets you change the intensity of your LEDs using a slider. The user can press the left button to turn the lights and to turn on the lights and the right button to turn them off. Then they can use a slider to adjust the intensity. So we, this is our bedside night light. We can turn up or turn down. So the first thing is to grab the value of the slider and store that in a variable. The intensity level is what I called it. And then we set all the LED intensities to that, that level that was indicated by the slider. And we have an onboard event. When we push the left button, they go on. When we push the right button, they go off. Let's try it. Left button on. And you can turn these up and down based on our slider. Again, this uses the change property of the intensity slider. So that's uh, continuously updating as we move the slider, the circuit um, playground responds. Right button off. Next was the LED color drop down. We're creating an app that lets the user select the color of LEDs using the drop down menu. So we are asked to get the value from the dropdown and store it in a variable and then update the color of each LED. Very similar to the previous exercises where we've got an event handler. When we change the dropdown, we're creating a variable called LED color. Using the get property, we're grabbing that value from the color dropdown. And then we're setting all of the LEDs to that particular value from the dropdown. So when we change this, it should go green, blue, orange, blue. Next was some alarm clock settings. And in this practice, we are Creating an app that lets you customize how an alarm clock looks and sounds when it goes off. Two settings, quiet and loud. Quiet setting plays low frequency, displays teal lights. Loud setting displays a higher frequency and red lights. The app has already been started for you with the quiet uh, section complete. We have to complete the first line of code with the variable, add the new if statements for the loud section. So, sounds pretty straightforward. We're going to get the value from this, uh, the text value from the settings dropdown, store it in a variable called setting. And we're gonna use two different loops here. If the, if the variable setting is equal to quiet, we have a lower buzzer frequency for half a second, all the LEDs are set to teal. If the setting from the dropdown is loud, we have a higher pitch being played and we have red LEDs. That was the loud and red, quiet and teal. And finally, the last practice level was debugging. This is a standing by. This program is supposed to control the LED and buzzer, but it has some problems. See if you can debug the code to make it work correctly. You only need to update the code that's already in the level. You don't need to add any new code. And there were three different things here. Turning on the LED, what we expected to happen was selecting an option from the dropdown and opening the toggle switch would update the red LED, but not all the options were working. And if I can remember correctly, what was it that I changed here? We have opening the toggle switch, get property. Super tricky on this one. I, if I remember correctly, if you go to the values options 
the for the speed slider. So if you go to the design window and uh, we look at the take a look at the speed slider. No, that wasn't it. Was it? It was the options for the LED drop down. We have on, blink, and pulse. Those are the three values for the options property of the LED drop down element. On, blink, pulse. They had a capital B for blink here, I believe. No, no, not there. It was here. Um, so when we were pulling, I mean, capitalization counts. Uh, you have to have the the value exactly um, exactly equal. So in order to get into that if loop, and then I don't remember what turning off the LED. The problem with that was, all right. Well, let's move on to the assessment. Okay, so here we are helping design an app that controls the traffic lights in a construction zone. The app will control the lights to tell drivers whether to merge left or right in order to avoid construction. It will also control the color and brightness of the lights to make sure they're not blinding or distracting. The app has already been started, needs to be finished. Do this, get the value from the color dropdown stored in a variable. Get the value from the brightness slider stored in a variable color and brightness. If the direction is left, set the left LEDs and turn off the right. If the direction is right, set the right LEDs and turn off the left LEDs. So we're going to create a couple of variables uh, for the color drop down and the brightness, which is interesting because looks like I didn't add that. We have direction and brightness, but we don't have color. But this this is a weird assessment anyway, because what we're really asked to do is create a couple of variables for one for color and one for brightness, but then we don't use them. Um, all we ask you to do then is set the left LEDs when uh, if the direction from the direction drop down is left set the left LEDs on, and if it's right, set the right LED on, LEDs on, but we never code in the functionality for, uh, for the color and the brightness. I guess that could be a future project. Anyway, if we were to get the uh, value from the color dropdown, we do like a variable color is equal to get property and that's going to be the color drop down I assume and we're going to want the text <clears throat> so we grab the color from the color drop down we grab the direction from that drop down we grab the brightness from the brightness slider and we put in the if loops for whether the direction uh, on the direction drop down is left or right. Activate the signal. So left, right. So the direction drop down is working. The color and brightness aren't coded in yet. It doesn't ask us to do that. <clears throat> all right, that's all for this one. Thanks for watching. See you at the next one.